Hey, hey, friends, and welcome to Profoundish. I'm your host, Weston. Alex will be joining me in just a moment as we discuss today my new book, YouTubers, and nut delivery services. That's right. Alex is going to be playing a game where he has to build his own nut, nut delivery service. So stay tuned to the end of the episode for that. You're listening to Profoundish. got something special in the mail on on friday did you is it my book it came yep i got mine last Excited. week too it's right here are you happy with how it turned out i mean i wasn't too worried about it but it, it was like one of those things where it's like i hope it comes out all right the delivery driver brought it slightly slightly creased on the corner but you, you can't really tell and it's a, it's a it's such a thin book because it's a little guy it's just a little guy I love it but though. I, I already have it. I already have it up on my bookshelf. I haven't uh, gone through it yet. I've read a lot of those, but I, I want to read through it again. And I think it looks good. The print looks good. I don't know. I'm assuming you didn't pay too much to get all this done, so I, it looks good. I'll say I didn't. I didn't pay anything because I made it all um, myself. So oh, the only thing. Cool. The only thing is that Amazon prints it, so obviously they get they get their cut out of the price. Before I do, yeah, obviously, because it's a, it's That's just cool. print on demand. But yeah, no, I I didn't pay anybody for the, I I did it. So so it's That's just my, really it's cool. just my okay. little guy. It's well, because some people do that, like especially with uh book covers, people will get it like they'll pay someone to, to design a book cover. Um, I didn't want to do that because I I knew this was not going to be a money maker. <laughs> this was not going to be a money making okay, yeah, book. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I can I can design it for myself, like literally in Canva. <laughs> so I wonder. I guess. That did maybe it's just because it was a different medium. But when I made my <clears throat> CDs, I did the same thing. So I designed it myself, right? Steph took the picture. I designed everything on the CD, but it cost me money to print the C, like to to print the CDs, right? And to like and then to, to have them assemble them. But it's also different mm-hmm. than a little booklet like that, I guess. Well, it, so it depends. A higher cost. Yeah, I. It sounded like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. When you did your album, it wasn't print on demand. You you bought a supply ahead of time, and then you sold that supply. Oh, that's true. You do an on demand. Okay, I see. Yeah, right. Because in which, my case, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that's uh, the the what you're doing, buying a supply and selling it, is yeah. often the uh, cheaper method of doing. Like you can make more profit per item, but with the caveat that now you have to buy everything up front. Yeah. When you do print on demand, my... it's usually smaller profit margins, but now you don't have to buy anything up front. Which I don't know if you remember this because this was, it feels like a, a like ages ago now, but I remember um, that exactly was what I wanted to do because I knew that I was, I mm. knew roughly I was going to sell probably like 30, 40, maybe 50 total. That was kind of what my goal was. And I thought I'd rather just do the, but that wasn't an option because there's so few companies now who mm-hmm. work with independents specifically. Uh, because it's such low profit margins anyway, yeah. um, to make CDs. So that's the across the board. I looked at multiple uh, manufacturers, and all of them, it's like minimum of hundred CDs. Minimum. Some of them were maybe fifty, but like it cost even more. So it's like yeah. for them, like it was it was only worth it to them if they could knock it all out up front. And I understand maybe it would have been different thirty years ago, but these it's CDs, right? So. You know, it's it's old. That's true. So That's true. I had, to, I had no option to do. I looked everywhere um to do, or else I would have done that because I was more interested in just getting it out and having a CD than I was actually making any money on it. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it is what it is. But um, I think uh, for something like your sucky. album, it's more of a it's more of a novelty to right. like get it in a CD form now. And yeah, I don't. That's a good point about like maybe years ago you could have done that. I don't know if CDs have ever been print on demand. CDs are a little bit more intensive to burn than a book. Like right. it, I did mine through Amazon, so they just have presses everywhere around the world. And they, this one, this book, literally, this one that I'm holding right now got printed in Moni, Illinois. This one got printed in state. You know what I mean? So like, oh weird. Okay, they cool. can print yeah. these anywhere because the data's online and they just. That's so uh, nice. I don't. I don't even know if Amazon uh, offers a bulk upfront order and then they just warehouse it. I don't think they even bother to do that. I don't even think that's an option. Not through Amazon anyway. You can probably do yeah. that similar through a publisher 
probably maybe right. but that's cool works so for me Amazon. everyone it's my book oh yeah smiling for the sky since we're on the podcast i'll just yeah. say i i put a poetry book out it's called smiling for the sky 83 haiku style poems in 31 it. pages it's available on amazon smiling for the sky if you don't see it immediately when you search smiling for the sky type my name smiling for the sky weston or weston hasty it'll show up right away or just weston hasty it'll show up there's a, a, a lot of books called something sky or something smiling so those might come up first because this is new so i would say weston hasty because that's yeah. all i typed in it's a unique enough first and last name put together he was first on the list and then you can click on it you see the little cover there and everything so super yeah. cool super good price and it's worth more than he's charging for it so you should definitely it's, uh definitely I, I don't i don't know about i don't know about that well it's if you have if you're listening and you have kindle unlimited it's free you can just go read it for free on kindle unlimited oh. it's a buck if you want to own it on ebook and it's uh 4.99 if you want the the physical copy to sit on your coffee coffee table or bookshelf or something have you have you done a uh an announcement yet? Like an official announcement? No. I've been dealing with my okay. computer. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, you've been busy, I, haven't you? Yeah. I uh, yeah. took a... Uh, yeah, my... For this We talked about this in the Patreon. Let's plug another thing. We talked about yeah. this over in the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash profoundish. Um, where my computer went kaput. And so I've been dealing with my mm. computer for um, a bit. Uh, getting it up and running again. My drive went out. And uh, so I've been dealing with that. I took a photo of me holding my book that I was going to post on Instagram, and I haven't done it yet. Um, so that's all. Okay, I've you done. got the picture. I've that's, got a picture. I took a picture with me, and then I didn't post it. I, that's as far as I. <laughs> that's as far okay. as I got. Now I don't know about you. Um, I know that I didn't take a picture of me with when I put my album out. Um, by the way, here there's my plug. My album that's like over a year old now. Songs from Sangamon Street. Go check that out anywhere you listen. Um, yeah. I. Uh, I remember when I promoted that, I was just going to take a picture of like a bunch of my CDs kind of lined up saying, okay, they're ready to go. Come order one, you know? Yeah. And I remember it It took me because I'm not, I know how to edit videos. I know how to like film stuff and like all that. Like I'm into it, but I'm not a photographer and that's a totally different field. It really is in terms of composing and all like, that's not really something I, I'm really trained on. Right. So I was trying to, like, I knew I envisioned, like, I want this to be a cool cinematic look at, like, you know, one of my CDs is propped up. Maybe one's laying next to it open. I wanted to look like it was, like, being presented almost like an ad or something, but, like, a really fancy, right? right. You know what I'm trying to say. Like, with I laid down some, like, felt on a table to make it look like, you know, whatever. Uh, well, it wasn't felt. I say it was felt, but it was actually just, like, one of my, <laughs> my, love, uh, like, like, things you eat on, on, like, a, on a dining room table. Oh, a tablecloth. Like a ta- like like a tablecloth, but like you know, like an individual, like you have four of them at your table, so so you yeah. don't like get crumbs, you know, whatever that a, is. A table I just laid mat. that down. Place table mat. mat thing, whatever they're called. Place mat. I think that's a place mat. Yeah. So because it looked a little nicer than just my table, but anyway, it took me like an hour to take that picture. <laughs> so like because I because I couldn't get what I was looking for. The part of it could just be my brain, right? And just it's not perfect enough. Blah blah blah. But did it take you a while to get the picture you liked? Did you just take one and went, all right, that's good. I just took one and said, all right, that's good. The only thing that took okay. time was I needed to figure out what was going to be in the background. So I needed to stand in front of right. something that made sense, uh, which I didn't yeah. do anything fancy. I'm standing in front of my coffee pot. Uh, you can see my <laughs> You'll be able I to like see my coffee though. pot. Yeah. There's layers to this image because it could be like you could kind of in, be implying like, hey, this is great to read with your morning coffee. You know, that, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, I got to stand in front of something. Uh, I, a plain blank wall because all my walls are that sort of like off white wall. It's yeah. not a very fun color. So like, if I'm just standing in front of it, I know that the focus isn't the background. But I'm like, I need. It is weird how much thought you do put into it because it doesn't really need that much thought. Yeah. But I'm like, well, I gotta be in front of something, but something that's not a mess. So I can't do yeah. it in my room because. With uh, having the computer open, I've got I've just got things scattered everywhere. The desks are all filled. I've got yeah. laundry on the floor I didn't put away because I was dealing with the computer. <laughs> I've got it's it's a mess in here. So yeah. I was like, oh, I can't do it in here. So I, I'm like walking around the living room and the dining room and the kitchen, and I'm like, what can I, what can I stand in front? Of? Okay, here's a spot. And then I took a I took the picture itself took all of five seconds, and then. <laughs> 
you should have like gone outside and like, okay, where's the dumpster? And just take a picture right in front of the dumpster with your book. <laughs> Honestly, outside would have been the move um, because yeah. it's smiling for the sky. I need to go stand outside with the sky or something. We've actually had, um, last true. couple of days, we've had some really dreary weather, which would have been perfect yeah. for this cover, actually. Not you normally great for a picture because you want more light, but perfect for the cover. I, I missed my opportunity on that. So, well, oh well. Since we're I'll plugging you here, picture. we might as well keep rolling on that for a second. So, what about the image itself on the front? Um, yeah. What's the story with that? So, so the so it's it's a heart because mm-hmm. it's uh <laughs> because the the subtitle which you won't be able to see super well on video but because it's intentionally very small. It's haiku style poetry about heartache is the subtitle. So heart, heartache. Usually love, romance, hearts, very colorful things. This is heartache. Gray skies, gray heart, gray, yep. gray cover. Why does it look like yep. a photo? I don't know. I just thought it was a cool look. Uh, I, didn't want to str- I didn't want to stretch out the, the heart image all the way across. I thought that looked strange. So I wanted it in something. And I didn't have, I'm, I'm not a designer, so I'm not, I'm not fancy, so I, I made I put it in a little photograph square instead. The I front like cover it. color is the gray gray gradient. You can ju- you might be able to tell by lighting, might be watching it. It's a gray gradient to match the actual photo itself, and then the back the back of the book's just black. Uh, I was not cool. fancy enough to design the 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 back uh, imagery, just the text. I liked your. Uh, this is silly because I haven't I haven't read through it yet, but I, I do like your um your bio on the back. Or not just the bio, but just the description yeah. of it too. Like everything you wrote on the back, I thought it was written very well. You're, I mean, you're a good writer. So, but I was just really, uh, I, I liked uh, it. I really struggled. I really struggled more than anything inside the book. I really struggled with the back, <laughs> with the with well, the sure. with the author bio, and then the description of the book. The description of the book, I think, makes the book sound way more fancy than it is. Well, but I, I really struggled. Well, it's funny because. It's hard when you're an artist and you make things like that, especially like in this case, a lot of these are coming from you, coming from mm-hmm. places within you. So it's very personal. And then you know exactly what you mean when you say it, because it's coming from you. But now you have to tell people what you're doing. And you almost have to like, it's almost like an out of body thing. You have to look at yourself, look yeah. at your work and go and kind of like be like review your own work and make it make sense for people who are thinking about getting it. It's a weird and thing. the the description was really hard too because ninety nine percent of the poems weren't actually necessarily written with the intention of being put into a collection. This was something I kind of like devised uh, yeah. afterward, right? So, um, tr- if you were writing a fiction piece and you were writing, you know, the description on the back of the book, you might describe the plot. For me, I'm like, well, all these there's a you can take when I write poetry, I want the reader to be able to take whatever out of it. It, yeah. That is evoked, right? Sometimes I intend one thing, but a couple of things are possible. So, like, I knew that there was a loose theme around heartache and some not heartache, just like romance or love or that kind of thing. So that the sort of the highs and lows and ups and downs. Mm-hmm. I knew that that was a vague theme. So but I have to write a description about the theme, but there's not like a plot. Like Jerry was a forty year old. Uh, man from ohio and he met sarah it, there was no plot yeah <laughs> you know what I right mean? right right so uh it wasn't yeah, like just straight yeah, yeah. Straight they're all from you pieces so that was I, Although, I i struggled with that but get ready for um weston's uh sophomore release called uh ohio love stories it's just love stories from people in ohio that's his next book um it's gonna just be called ohio love and ohio <laughs> I don't know why, but I hate that. Ohio loving. <laughs> Ohio loving. <clears throat> I don't even know anything about Ohio. I'm not from there. I don't think I've been there specifically unless I've just been through it. Really? Maybe. It's not I don't that far th- from Illinois. No, I have to I have to hang on. Map of America. My geography is god awful. Hang on. It's I Illinois, gotta... Indiana, Ohio. Okay. I so it's right next to Indiana. Up pull up google maps that was a little extravagant but like ohio Ohio. i guess if you're not if you're not finding yourself on the east coast very often like if you didn't take a lot of trips out that way then why would you because that's, <laughs> that's you what know I'm, that's what i'm trying to remember i'm like i don't think i've ever been 
to Ohio unless I was through it or by it for some reason. Because I've been to Indiana. I've been to Tennessee. I've been to Kentucky. But really, I don't think I ever went to Ohio because I've been to South Carolina. But I don't we didn't go through Ohio to get there. I don't think I've ever been in any part of Ohio. Really? I yeah. guess, I don't know if it's that weird for an Illinoisan to say that or not. I know for me, it sounds weird because I have a lot of family from Ohio. Um, my, uh, I had some family that was born there, and then my, my stepdad's family's there. So we took trips there growing up all the time. So I've been, to, I've been to all the Ohio places, all the big ones. I've been to Cleveland. I've been to Cincinnati. I've been to Columbus. So I've kind of been to all those places. One place I haven't been, I think it's in Cleveland, is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame which I would love to go to because that's right. like an iconic place. I've never been there. But um, it's I know, it's like any other Midwest state. There's things and then there's not things. That's that's about it, <laughs> you know. But <clears throat> other than uh, the other fun fact about Ohio is just that um, a ton of famous YouTubers are from there. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. The only one, I, okay, the only YouTuber that's famous that I know is from Ohio, and I don't know how I know this, he must have said it at one point, is uh, Scott the Waz. He's from Ohio. I know that. He's but that's from the only Ohio. one I can think of at the top of the my head. The Paul brothers are from Ohio. Markiplier is oh. from Ohio. Uh, oh. <laughs> Mr. Beast is from Ohio. All the top like YouTubers are from Ohio or around Cincinnati. <laughs> that's they so all came from the same me. place. <laughs> It's weird. It's so weird because, and and trust me, I'm sure there's a million, like, in the game, or a million YouTubers that are, because when I think of, like, our home state, Illinois, and I think, unless you're from Chicago, Illinois pretty much means nothing, but, like, you'd think there's a lot of Chicago-based creators, but I'm sure there are that maybe just aren't in the gaming space. Oh, I I don't know. Mr. Beast was North Carolina. I must be thinking of someone else. Okay. Correction. Correction on that. (laughs) I have another Ohio thing. You can look this up. There's like a a weird, like abnormal amount of serial killers who are from Ohio. It's like one of the highest, like more, like more people are. You know, maybe there's something related there. YouTubers, when you're really big and famous, you probably have some kind of ego. You have to be a little narcissistic to do that. (laughs) Serial killers, really about themselves. There's something about narcissism in Ohio. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to look this up really quick. I think it's uh, Ohio serial killers there's like there's like i don't know i read something somewhere where it's like ohio has one of the most serial killers that were born in that state uh jeffrey dahmer uh, i'm trying to look at like the big ones here matt there's a crap matt ton. pat's from ohio maybe that's who i was thinking of matt pat he recently just did his last video i think he did he retired he retired from doing youtube as his like main shtick he's like just consulting in the background I wonder how many people like who just see thumbnails and just look at the headlines just think Matt Pat quit forever. He's not involved at all. He's he's done. He's he's gone. Like to be fair, he kind of made it seem like he was going to be gone gone. I mean, he yeah, said he, he said many times he won't be gone gone, but he kind of made it seem like it cuz he really laid it on heavy with his four channels that he runs that like he's going away and then he themed his going away vaguely after unis honest um theming yeah. which unis honest was a channel that it was here for a year and then deleted gone done period love that so idea by the way it was a great love idea it. massive thing the live stream when they were about to delete their channel was huge i fell asleep while i was watching it i didn't actually get to see the delete button i just woke up and oh, it was man. this channel no longer exists i'm like oh <laughs> Right, that's so crazy. That's but such a cool yeah. idea. Well, yeah, the, it's funny too because even for me, that felt like a big deal. And I, I'm not. I never really. I mean, I used to watch Game Theory back when it was like the forefront, <laughs> and like this is probably I think before he divided out into his other channels because now there's like the food one and the film one and all that. But um, I, you know, for me, it's kind of one of those things of like it's it's the comfort of knowing that that was always there. <laughs> I mm-hmm. never would really watch it these days. Maybe every once in a while I'd click on a video, but really it's not what, I, what I'm into on YouTube. But the fact that like he was always there, he's Matt Pat's game theory, he's such a huge thing, and yeah. it's still happening, but he was the face of that for so long. So it, just, it's, it was just so weird. It, it, it was kind of like, your, you know, like it's like your, your best friend's moving away, or it was some, something kind of, it was almost felt personal, because it was always kind of there, even if you never watched it. Now that it's, not going to be the same. I mean, it's still there. They're, I know they're all... It's something about him. I don't know. It's just... It's interesting. You know what I mean? 
he'd been there since like darn near the beginning right so yeah. like it was just he was a mainstay youtube face and i don't know yeah like uh i would binge his stuff from time to time and then he would have his like sit down on the couch and talk about the state of youtube type videos every now and again yeah. those were always very insightful because he's been doing it for so long and he knows a lot of the behind the scenes stuff so it was like okay matt pat really knows what's going on when he's not i mean when when he's not too busy just nerding over five nights at freddy's <laughs> which i have right, no right. actual interest in whatsoever I, but <laughs> i have i have nothing but respect for the decision he made I know a lot of people, you know, it was a pretty dramatic big thing, but it's like, it's the natural progression. It is completely the natural progression, right? You kind of pass the torch. He built this amazing thing and he's keeping the energy alive. You can't expect to be doing this when you're 90 or dead, you know, and if you want to keep... to a certain extent, I don't see why not. If you if you're if you're if you're as successful as a Matt Pat or many, there's a bunch of big YouTubers that are retiring or stepping back. It's like... You can hire a team and do the easy stuff and then still move on to your other work. That's what kind of kills me. But I, I may I maybe I'm just seeing it from the video gaming perspective. You never really have mm-hmm. to stop just playing video games and putting it on camera if you don't want to. Lots of people do that. I saw I was watching some retired army vet. He looked like he was probably 60. Uh, yeah. on TikTok streaming Fortnite and talking about his <laughs> army days. <laughs> That's crazy. That's and so I was weird. like, what on earth? So, so like, are you, you saying, know. are you saying, are you saying like more like, um, just to make sure I understand, like, why couldn't he just, it, it's as simple as, hey, maybe like somebody else is writing the scripts for the most part. Mm-hmm. Somebody else, you know, he's just kind of getting in front of the camera or he's not even in front of the camera for those videos mostly. It's just that little talking head. He just narrates. Yeah. So like, do you mean kind of more like that? Just kind of hop on and narrate and still be the face. But then he, but because he's freed up with all that extra time of not doing all the extra fluff he can still pursue other projects is that kind of what you're saying and and maybe i'm misunderstanding the scope of his uh, of his schedule but Mm -hmm. yeah that's essentially what i'm saying it's like what if i just come into the office monday tuesday wednesday to do uh script reads and on camera work and that's all i do anything else yeah anything else because you can split it up like i don't have to always be on camera he can still do the pass it on he's got new hosts he's got new people working on things people writing scripts he can still do all that i'm kind of imagining like um Hank Green stepping away from doing literally everything on SciShow, where he's he still right. comes in and does records. He still helps in the background, but you got a whole host of people that do all the on-camera work. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what I, I'm thinking. Yeah. I wonder, you know, and we don't know his the extent of his workload, right? Or like what it's been. Right. I I wonder how much of this is and he didn't really say this because I watched, of course, I'm sure you did too. I watched his like announcement video. And he never really said this part, but I wonder how much of it is true just from you and I having a similar perspective of making stuff for so long. I wonder if it, part of it, too, is just like, I'm kind of, I wonder if he's kind of tired. Like, I'm, I'm <laughs> just kind of ready to take a back seat. Like, just talk, like, I might love it, but I'm still kind of done. And, yeah. I, and I, maybe he didn't want to say that because it could paint a negative picture or whatever, even if he, he probably would have nothing but good intentions by saying it. Like, I'm just ready for something new. I, it was more about... He just wants to pursue other things, right? Mm-hmm. But I wonder if there's a part, an element of, I'm tired. Because I would be. Even if it were just as simple as going in and just, say it was that simple for him. Going in, script's written, here's what it is, blah, blah, blah. Another element could be, what if he was, I don't know how involved he actually was, especially in the later years, like with actually, con- I know like he'll conceptualize the ideas and all that. I don't know how much he did with script writing or any of that. I wonder if, it's one of those things where if let's assume he did for a second, right? He was really mm-hmm. kind of involved in a lot of different small pieces. I wonder if it's kind of like if I can't devote all my time to all these things anymore, maybe he would feel like he's being less authentic just going in and just, maybe, you, you know, I don't know. I really don't know his flow. I, I don't keep up with him enough to know that, but um, I get it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm- I understand. I see what you're saying. I'm definitely not saying he made the wrong decision. I, I'm, I'm, I don't right. think he made this decision lightly. I, so mm-hmm. that, that's definitely not it. It's just one of those. And like I said, maybe I'm coming from a point of view where like I don't understand the full scope. So it, which is totally right. fair. Um, especially um, since he ran so many channels, it's like you know he could step. Like when I said like I can come in and read a script Monday through Wednesday. I mean like literally. That might just be for two or three of his channels, not all of. You know what I mean? Like it would be right stepping away that's how i see it and then that would still free up a lot more of his time but i also don't know 
how heavy his behind the scenes work still will be after this yeah. or if he's if this is just his retirement like i don't know what kind of money he's made over the years running all these channels and then of course the theorists collection of channels he'd actually sold the company a while back and he, he i forget what his position was he was like basically the creative director he wasn't like yeah. the owner of everything anymore and I remember when he announced that and said something about that, I kind of saw that writing on the wall eventually. Yeah. Because, I mean, he's passing the torch. And so it's like, I kind of saw that coming, but I don't know what his, I don't know what it's going to look like now. It was such a weird landscape those few weeks when, like, it felt like everybody wasn't making these announcements. They weren't all the same in, in terms of exactly what they were doing. Some people were saying they were burnt out. Other people were saying that they're just, they're ready to move on or whatever. Um. I was going to say this, which I think is interesting. For the ones that are more like burnout, I guess, related, I was watching uh, the tech guy, Brownlee, um, him. Mark as uh, Bra- Brownlee. Or- Mark, Mark, Mark as Brownlee. Yeah. I will never um, not call him Mark as Brownlee ever since Will Smith in the YouTube Rewind 2018 or something like that. Mark as Brownlee. <laughs> He it said Mark Ass. Like, it sounded like he said Mark Ass, Mark Ass Brownlee. I'll never Mark not is, think hilarious. of that. His name so, is just Will Smith to me. It is hilarious. Uh, right. <laughs> I, uh, that is funny. So, yeah, he, I was watching a video of him. He had like a, just, he just made a video talking about that, about just kind of that whole thing. And he made a couple of interesting points about, first of all, he kind of gave the perspective again of, of how, at the, in the scheme of like, the industry it's still such a brand such a brand new thing and you know we don't have decades and decades of history about how all this goes i mean now it's been almost two which is wild to think about but he's talked about how there really is no rubric or guidebook for creating content on like being a youtuber or whatever you want to call it because no and and, and he talks about how think of it this way he kind of paints a perspective he kind of told his own story about how his channel got big too he was like you're doing in most jobs you have a job you do it and then you move on and this job especially at the beginning you're doing everything right you are conceptualizing you're writing you're editing you're marketing your your every department for your business yeah and and he talks about how like you know if you don't have discipline or even guidance or help you know and everyone's different everyone re- responds to these things differently no wonder you're going to maybe burn yourself out or you're not going or you're going to start going down paths you don't want to go down creatively because you're 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 worrying about the creative and the business and it's just it's an interesting perspective that and it's like he's right though we are kind of doing everything there's parts of my process that I do not want to do i totally <laughs> wish i could just do the creative part and then have a professional put it out and get it to the right people. You know, yeah. for example, like on that side, like I'm not a fan of the marketing side of it. So, but that's just one element. Even just a creative process, you edit, but then some people, depending on what you do, if you put your face in there, you got to know how to present yourself. You got to know, you're you're learning everything as you go and you're doing every single job. And I think for a lot of people too, this is kind of a side point. It's almost like, what if you're just naturally not good at some of these things? You right. know, we're not all good at everything. That's, you know, I think a lot of people... That's why so many right. people fail. It, the doing YouTube requires you to have a very wide skill set, more so than some and people how realize. Could you? Yeah, like, right. I think so many of us, and I'm including me in this. Okay, I'm including me. I think so many of us end up being jack of all trades and absolute master of none of them, because we're kind of forced to divide out our time and, and resources to so many things only so often that we can't even really hone in on skills. I'm talking especially if you're kind of starting from scratch, right? Like I already had this skill before I did YouTube, but like, you know, for the most part, it, it's an interesting perspective and it's still such a brand new landscape in the, in the scheme of it all. I don't know. It really? Is. That is probably why so many end up failing. You're right. And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> and on oh, this that isn't note, the YouTubers quitting episode. It's not, but, um, that's, I'll tell you what, this uh, the game that I have prepared for today is going to have nothing to do with what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what was the topic supposed to be? It's... <laughs> this is hilarious. I'm just going to wait wait until the other side of the of the break. Everyone oh, listening okay. already knows because it's in the intro, but wait until the yeah, other true. side of the break. You won't see this coming. 
brought to you in part by Magic Man Mo, a gaming YouTube channel run by me. We stream and we do variety Let's Plays. Check out a short stream compilation to see if it's something that you're going to be into. It's a lot of fun. I made it so I know. That's Magic Man Mo on YouTube. Profoundish is brought to you in part by Alex Duquette Medleys. I make theme song medleys, which is where I take a bunch of theme songs and mash them up into one bite-sized song. From Nickelodeon to Adult Swim, I cover it all. So, if you want to take a fun, nostalgic trip, search my name, Alex Duquette, on YouTube or go to alexduquette.net. Welcome back from the other side of the break, Alex. You see my screen? I do. I do see your screen, Weston. Do you have any idea what podcast we're doing today? Um, I can't remember the <laughs> the the. I'm th- I'm gonna call it the Nut Brothers. I don't know. You were so close. Welcome everybody to the Nut Delivery Podcast, the podcast <laughs> about delivery. nuts and how to deliver them to your front door. We didn't talk about any of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Okay. You know. When we did the nut delivery podcast, we talked about it being like a short it's like series. It's more or less advertising maybe some kind of nut brand. And then we deliver like nut facts and nut related topics. <laughs> well, yeah. that got kind of side railed. But, you know, it's OK because we're playing um, a little game. What, what did we call this game? So you we you're OK. I'm the host. You're going to be fulfilling a nut delivery service. Mm-hmm. And uh putting different squirrels um, and chipmunks, I think that's it, and a couple of ma- mice, in charge of a nut delivery service. Right, yep. Okay, you, I like this. I don't remember. What did we call this game? It's been a while since we did one. I don't even, I don't even I don't remember. Think we've ever come up with a name. We're just slowly building this universe out. We've done this we have before a name, with a pizza place and a nightclub and I, um, we, on a mission to Mars. We've done this on a few different episodes. Yeah. A there haunted train. Haunted train is a good one. We have nine positions to fill for a nut delivery service. All right. Now How before specific. Now before we move on, Alex, did you want to share uh, that poll information? Oh yeah. I was going to share this on the first segment and I forgot to. So I just wanted to say really quick, make sure you if you're listening on Spotify, check out our polls. We always ask you a question and we kind of like to read what the votes end up being to kind of get an idea of what your what you guys are up to. So this is from a few weeks ago now, uh, but it was the episode where we talked about being colorblind. And um, one of the questions was that we asked on Spotify, are you colorblind? And I'm surprised. I figured because the likelihood is just not super high. um, We actually had a 50, 50 split between I am and I'm not. Oh, so there's people, at least a few who are colorblind to listen, which is interesting. And it might or be even, a more minor one or something like that, but some right. kind of color blindness, maybe. Because there was an option too. It was like I know someone who is, which I thought, okay, that's maybe more likely. Mm-mm. So there's one. The other one from an episode I think soon after that was how do you handle stress when we talked about the uh, stress episode. Yeah. And hundred percent of our uh, votes was so. Here are the options. It was I get quiet and shut down. I get angry and annoyed, or I live life stress free. Right. That one was kind of fun because <laughs> who actually lives life stress free? And uh, so anyway, and then, but 100% went to, I get quiet and shut down. Yeah, I can see that. Those are pretty vague, but I wanted to keep it vague so people could kind of relate to any of them. So I guess I get that. That's Yeah, I definitely start to shut down when I get super stressed. But we talked about that. So if you haven't listened to it, go listen to our stress episode after we complete the nut delivery service. This one. All righty. Nut delivery service. Nine positions to fill. The positions are delivery boy, driver, nut packer, the person that packs the nuts, nut farmer that farms the nuts, nut taster, taste the nuts, make sure that they're okay, nut science to develop new nut technologies in the delivery service, president of nuts, in charge of all nut things nut, nut of finance, take care of the money, and the head nutter, he's the wackadoo, the the inspiration, the mascot. Weston, people are going to clip the crap out of this one. <laughs> I hope that, so. That's what I'm waiting for. That's okay. All the, all the nut talk. I hope someone is walking around like, you'll never guess who the president of nuts is. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there the cab- Is there the catch? There is a catch. Let me um, okay. list out who we have. These are the people that you have uh, to uh, fill the positions with. We've got, what's your name? We've got Hammy 
from um, Over the Hedge. He's a squirrel. Yep. We got Stuart Little from Stuart Little. We've got Mickey Mouse from Mickey Mouse. We've got uh, Remy from Ratatouille. We've got Jerry from Tom and Jerry. We've got the uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, the trio, all three of them. Um, we've got uh, 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 Sandy, Sandy Cheeks from SpongeBob. We've got Scrat from uh, Ice Age. <laughs> we've got Rocky the Flying Squirrel from Rocky and Bullwinkle. We've got Chippendale from Chippendale Pow- uh, uh, so Power Rangers. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Um, mm-hmm. We've got, uh, well, what's his name? Uh, Conker. Con- Conker from Conker's uh, Bad Fur Day. And we've got Sally, Princess Sally Acorn from Sonic the Hedgehog. That gives you oh boy. Okay. 12 possibilities. And I'm going to determine, I do this live so that there's no way I can know what's going on. One of these candidates is going to be a, an imposter whose sole purpose is to destroy the nut industry from the inside, to take down your delivery service. Maybe they work for a competitor. Maybe they, they are just secretly a say, nut yeah. hater. Um, we can't I, get rid of nuts. I love nuts. Can't get rid of nuts. All right, I have determined the imposter. I'll keep that in the back of my head. So the way that this works is that every couple of questions, Alex will have the opportunity to ask a question about who the nut imposter is, and I can answer um, a yes or no question, kind of like 20 question style, and that will help him to, t- or like, uh, what's the game with the where you flip the heads down? Guess who, I think? Guess who, yeah. Something along those lines, and I'll give him information, and you'll use that information to try to figure out who the imposter might be. There is one catch. Your very first selection is blind. Oh. So. Okay. You can choose which position you want to fill first and who you would like to fill it with. What are we thinking? Uh, Okay, really quick. So we got at the top, the top two, because I am looking at the screen. It's kind of small, but it's as big as I can make it. Okay. Um, Is it, does it say delivery boy? Delivery boy. It can be a girl. Okay. Delivery nut. Delivery nutter. Delivery. (laughs) So the nut delivery, but then we also have the driver. Yes. So those are separate. So there's somebody. So they're both in the vehicle together. Yeah, one's driving and one's delivering. So we've got the. I, I kind of imagine the delivery is more like imagine a newspaper like newspaper route, like a kid's is on their bicycle or something delivering nuts, and then the driver is more like interstate, right? Like making the long <laughs> hauls, long hauls <laughs> for like the bigger orders and all that. That's stuff. That's what I'm okay. imagining. Yes. Okay. Okay. I like this. I like this. I guess we'll just go in order from the top to the bottom, which is going to be starting with Delivery Boy. Okay. Or Delivery Girl. Um, the thing about kind of those local deliveries, is it, it depends, right? So when you compare it to the Paper Boy, a lot of the time that's going to be happening. There's not a lot of interaction with the homeowners. It's usually just, hey, let me drop off your nuts for you. Or like the <laughs> milkman or something, right? So I don't think necessarily personality needs to play a huge role in this one. But efficiency does. You need to be quick. You need to make sure you're kind of on time with your route. Um, we have a lot of different squirrels here, some of which I know about, some of which I don't know a whole lot about. But I'm going to try to think here because I want to make sure that I use everybody in a good place. I think, well, you know what? I'm thinking about what's the name of the, let me look at the other ones. We got the, well, so we got the packer too. We need efficiency in a lot of these. Who would be good with time? That's the real question. Honestly, like no one, right? Mm. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm struggling with. I think maybe just maybe just kind of like a. Because like I'm looking at. OK, for example, I'm looking at the Ice Age guy. What's his name? Kraz or Ta- Scrat. what's the name? Scrat. Scrat. Because Scrat is a nutcase. Um, I love Scrat. He's quick and he's all over the place. But that but if they could channel that energy into his work, <laughs> it would be incredible. It'd be unstoppable. <laughs> So I'm trying to think where Fair. in the where in the production chain would he best fit, right? Like I'm just I'm so afraid that he would if we put him like because I'm looking at him, right? If we put him in, if he's packing the nuts up, he could be making a mess. He's all over the place. He runs. He scatters. He's throwing stuff around that may not be super productive, and we got to get those out. I'm almost wondering if being a delivery boy would be better because I don't want him running the company. <laughs> um, I don't want him running the finances. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. What's the head nutter again? What's the actual description of that? Could you give me that one more time? The head nutter is the inspiration, right? 
they're they're okay. the, they're the wackadoo. They're the mascot. They're the oh, nutty one. Okay. They're they're just well, like maybe a Scrat face. Should go there. Right. Okay. They do no actual well, no, actually, work. They are the creative. They are the creative. <laughs> <laughs> there's better. There's better faces for that than I'm. This may be a maybe a weird choice, but I'm going to put Scrat as the delivery. Scrat as Cause, delivery. Because when I think about him in the production chain, probably wouldn't be the best choice. And then I think about him as the front man, kind of like if, if he's going to be on the promotional material for these nuts. If he's had nutter, right? If he's the face, I don't know if people are going to want to buy nuts from a spaz like that. You know, it, it'd be a gamble. It could work. It could not. So I think Delivery Boy, he's going to be riding on his bike, running around, just throwing him at the doors. I think he, he needs to go there. <laughs> I'll put him there. My biggest concern with Scrat and Delivery Boy is whether or not he'll just start eating them all instead of delivering them all. I'd like to think that he gets paid in nuts, so I think he has a little bit of self control. You that, think that, so? That's 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 my goal. So they they don't even have to pay him cash; they just pay him in nuts. I think so um, he, he separates. Do you know what the name of the studio? I, I don't have it off the top of my head. The name of the studio that did Ice Age back in the day. I think they like closed was it down. No, it was like Blue Sky or Sky something. I don't know. Age Studio. I think they shut Blue Sky Studios. And are okay. they still around? I didn't know that. Uh, Because I I think they just, they closed their doors like a year or two ago or something like that. Yeah, so uh, Blue Sky Studios shut down and they released a video, a short, a short video as their like goodbye video that was Mm Scrat finally getting his nut. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. He finally had it. He looks around like he's suspicious, like, you know, like, you know, is this for real? And then he eats it. He, He just eats the nut and then walks off screen and just leaves behind the little cap of the acorn. What a nice little bow to wrap that up with. That's great. I love that. And I brought a, brought a tear to my eye like, oh, no. That's beautiful. I need to watch that. Yeah, I think I'm, a, I'm just going to assume, especially if he just kind of ate it and walked off, that kind of, I think, helps my case. If we can make the assumption that he's getting paid in nuts, he's got what he wants, but he can channel that high energy to really do a great job delivering and get it done quickly. He's definitely so, got the energy gonna, and the I'm dedication. And the dedication. I'll give you that. Oh, my God. I mean, his whole, well, livelihood is based around nuts. All right. So. I'll let you All now. Right. You've done your blind assignment. Let's hope it. he's not the imposter. Okay. You may ask a question about the imposter now. Okay. Is the imposter. I'm going to jot this down, too. Is the imposter wearing clothes? Yes. You said yes? Yes. Okay, let me write that down. Wearing clothes. <laughs> Wearing clothes. Interesting. Okay. That doesn't bring break, break it I down find... too far, but I uh you know. There's a few there's a few naked ones. So, okay. Um What's your next assignment going to be? I guess I'm guessing I'm going to go to driver. Driver. All right, driver. Um so we're doing long hauls here. So there's really not a lot of face-to-face interaction here, but we need somebody who can kind of... I'm assuming these are going to be some long hauls, not just in terms of distance, but in terms of time. A lot of truck drivers are driving for long periods of time. Oh, yeah. Um, so we need somebody who's going to be able to kind of really keep up with that. Now, to my knowledge, I remember <laughs> that... Uh, was it... What's the name of the one from uh, Over the Hedge? Uh, Remy. Isn't Remy no, no, pretty, no, not, like, kind of wild? I'm sorry, Hammy. Hammy. Isn't Hammy kind of, like, kind of wild, too? Like, running around and all that stuff, to my knowledge? I haven't seen Over the Hedge in a while. He's I'm a, pretty sure he's got a lot of energy himself. He's got a lot of energy, like, you'd expect a squirrel to have. But he's more like the... He's actually the, the mastermind of Over the Hedge, right? He's, like, the thinker. He's, like, uh... Like a little, a little, a little, okay. little scheming a little bit. Oh, I know what to do. I know what to do. So, because my biggest concern, honestly, oh, oh, I got the Nutpacker. See, I keep looking at, I keep looking at other positions, and I get scared. Um, he's a <laughs> schemer. I want to, I want to kind of put him somewhere else. Okay, how about this? I think I want kind of a straight man for the. Well, who's who's in the bottom left corner? That's from uh, Rocky um, from Rocky and Bullwinkle. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Winkle. <laughs> I like Bullwinker. Bull, like Bullwinker. Winker. <laughs> um, so Rocky doesn't Rocky know? Forgive me, right? I'm kind of I'm not super educated on Rocky and Bullwinkle. Doesn't Rocky like drive a plane or something? Or fly um, a plane? Does he? 
I don't know. Rocky. Isn't the... there like some sort of like like is there like a mach- machinery that Rocky uses? He might. Uh, I he's a flying squirrel, so he's got like I thought little wings that he flies around with. But I don't remember him flying anything. Well, you might be thinking of like he's... Snoopy. Or me- it's he's an got older the aviation cartoon. goggles on, right? Because he's a flying squirrel. Like that's so. I'm just gonna I'm gonna use that <laughs> and put him. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put him as the driver. You know that's um, fair. I'll, I'll take that. I, I I like I just like that placement, especially after looking at those like goggles. I'm thinking, you know, he's probably if he's got those goggles on, he's probably at least used some um, machinery or kind of like transportation tools before so i feel like he'd be a good driver for long hauls and if, stuff if not for anything else at least he should be a good navigator yeah absolutely okay well i'll let you make another assignment before you ask your next question oh yeah i wanted to ask again okay so <laughs> i guess we're gonna go to the packer so this is who's packing out the nuts for rocky to pick up and take off the nut packer so the nut packer nut so i'm gonna avoid i'm gonna avoid clothes because I just need to. You say that, um, but Rocky wears a pair of goggles. See, I consider those accessories, so maybe I should have specified. Who knows? Um, Who knows? Uh, well, it's too late now. <laughs> All right, so let's do... So we're pretty much looking between um, Remy, the other one from Over the Hedge, and then what, uh, Jerry. Um, or is that Tom? I always forget. Yeah, Tom's oh, the cat. Yeah. Tom and Jerry. So... Jerry is all about the hijinks, though. So, like, I'm just afraid if they can discipline him, he'd be a good packer. Remy, I mean, Remy's... I'm trying to think if Remy would be better somewhere else, because Remy's, I mean, all about the cooking. So... Yeah, yeah. I might want to use Remy for, like, nut taster or something. So, in fact, Ooh. you know what? I'm going to jump around here. Remy would be really great, I think, for the nut taster. Can we go and put Remy there? Is that okay? Yeah, Remy and nut. Yeah, you don't have to go in the order I have them listed up here. You can go in your own order. Okay. Yeah, I I feel like that's just going to be a safe choice um, just because he he knows food. So who's going to have a better taste than, you know, and a better kind of eye, Yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better word, than than Remy. So that that's where I'm going to put that. And I know it's safe because he's not wearing clothes. I think Remy was a shoe in for either nut taster or nut science even. Either way, I think yeah. definitely good good position for him. I just I didn't even think about it when I because I made the positions outside of me making all this the squirrels I or the you know the yeah. characters or whatever. Not that he's a squirrel, he's a mouse, he's a rat. Uh, but yeah, no, that's a good one. I will allow you a second question about the imposter. Okay. Um. So we got a mouse. We got a mouse. We got chipmunks. We got a squirrel. Yeah, most uh, of them. Chip and Dale, what are they? Are, are they? Uh, Chip and Dale are, they, are uh, uh, chipmunks. Chipmunks, okay. Yeah, Chip and Dale um, and then the, and the Alvin and the chipmunks. I forget the name of the other two. <laughs> Alvin and the other two. <laughs> Alvin, yeah, Simon, Alvin and, and something two, exactly. else. Uh, it'll come to me. But anyway, those are the two chipmunk selections. And then we've also got some squirrels and some mice. I guess what I'm going to ask is... Oh, who's the Sonic one? What what kind of animal? Uh, Princess Sally Acorn is a uh, squirrel. Squirrel. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to ask this. Is the imposter a squirrel? No. No. Oh God. So it's either going to be chipmunks or mice. So now I know that I. Okay. 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 That's fine. So. Yeah. Let's move on here. Um, for the Packer. Nut Packer. I feel like... Let me write this down, too. Either I find that when I write things down, it's easy for me to remember quicker. Chipmunk or mouse? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to look at these notes later and go, wearing clothes, chipmunk or mouse? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like, what the hell does that mean? How cryptic. Okay. So they're not a squirrel, so I'm going to... Probably go in the squirrel territory here for a minute. Um, or I could guess I could, could go for the, one of the naked ones, too. For Nutpacker, I don't think we need to really think too much into this. Just somebody who's going to do their job and I think do it well. Yeah. Um, you know. I feel like... Well, you know what? What do I I'm going to jump around again. Jump around. I'm going to go to uh, 
I think I'm going to go to Nut Farmer. And I think what I'm going to do okay. is pick Sandy. Sandy as the um, Nut Farmer? I'm picking Sandy as the Nut Farmer because, one, Sandy's from Texas. Two, um, no, the, the real thing about Sandy is that she actually does do a lot of, um, to my knowledge, in her little dome, she has plants and she like... That's true. She does like farming related things in her dome. So she's got that prior experience. Um, so I feel like that she would just do really well with that. So that's where Sandy's going. She, she, she'll be the nut she farmer. Can be, uh, she could be a nut rancher. <laughs> yeah, a nut rancher. Exactly. A nut rancher. Everything's bigger in Texas, including my nut ranch. <laughs> Big old nut ranch. Big old nuts. Okay. Okay, we'll put Sandy... <laughs> We'll put Sandy. Big old nuts. Big, big old. There's, a, there's oh, just something about really fun about just the word nut. I know it's nut. so great. What's your What's what your next to one going to be? So I can't pick another. Not another question. I can't ask yet. another question. Right. Okay. Every the first one's um, blind, and then you get to ask a question every two uh, two selections. Uh, yeah. All right. So nut science. Let's talk about science, science. kind of like nut research. Yeah. Um, who would be good at the research? Oh, I guess, you know what I'm going to... Mm, I guess we don't really have a marketing role for the over-the-head... I keep forgetting the over-the-head squirrel's name. Sorry. Uh, um, uh, Hammy. Uh, yeah, we don't really have a marketing necessarily. You could kind of lump that into like president maybe or even president, maybe head guess, nutter yeah. kind of but like not anything that's specifically marketing those just might be more right i imagine nut science is like they're they're the ones that behind the scenes in the labs you know yeah they're the ones making new I'm flavors put... of nut right <laughs> i mean hammy could be good at that if they're a schemer and a planner can you tell me a little bit about the personality of the sonic character because i that's the only one i know nothing about i know nothing about her <laughs> uh okay yeah, no, that's fine sally as sally the princess she's a princess princess sally acorn uh is just a famous squirrel in the sonic community and i thought uh, of famous squirrels that's what i started with i started like i was like i went to google famous squirrels from cartoons or whatever animated squirrels she was one of them I'm like well maybe people know about her i don't <laughs> okay um, I guess I, I, I want to do something with Hammy because I know Hammy's going to be safe. So I'm trying to think where I would put Hammy because like I'm, I'm looking at because I'm looking at other safe bets that I know of right now. Like I look at Conker and I go, OK, Conker's a drunk. He's profane. <laughs> he he's violent and he's irresponsible. So like if he's going to be working for this company, he needs to be in a place where he's going to cause the least amount of trouble. Or so I don't want him at the front of the company or. Say what? <laughs> I said, or the most. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. So if he did anything, he might be the nutpacker, but that's also very pivot or a very crucial role to make sure it's done right. You want to make sure there's <laughs> no contamination going on. You need to make sure everything's packed up right. So I don't know. I think Hammy. Okay. I'm going to put Hammy, I guess, at nut science. I think I'm just going to put him there. I feel like he can come up with some really creative ideas, maybe for new recipes or for new, maybe new ways of growing the nuts i don't know i, I think i think that'd be a decent place for, yeah, for him we'll get to flex his creativity a little bit and see if he can come up with yeah. some solutions some nut lucians to his nut problems i don't like nut lucians let's not say <laughs> that one <laughs> nut lucians. i don't like nut lucians um what's your nut lucian kind of, let us know in the comments below it sounds kind of close to nut lotion but their nut lotion might not be so bad <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't I'm going to pivot this business I don't to, to a nut, about nut lotion, lotion delivery. So you don't want to talk about nut lotion? It's lotion made from nuts. Not the <laughs> other thing that you were oh. thinking of. <laughs> I thought it was lotion for nuts. <laughs> oh. Not lotion from nuts, but like you're putting lotion on your nuts to easily... Nut butter. Um, that you, I guess take them down. It'd be like nut butter you dip your nuts into. You dip your little you know, pistachios or your uh, mm. uh, peanuts good, or actually. whatever <laughs> into a nut butter called nut lotion. I like it. <laughs> I like that. Just it's, it's just hot butter. Just hot, steaming nut butter. What's your next question going <laughs> to be? All right, well. <laughs> um, okay, let me ask this. I'm just trying to dwindle it down. I'm just trying to be 
as simple as I can with it. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Actually, I, I have a great question. Uh-huh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, this is not a question that I'm asking for this. It's actually a separate question. Okay. Um, Chippendale, is anybody in that picture wearing red? Uh, in the Chippendale picture, yeah. Alvin's wearing red. Crap. Crap, okay. And then I think right, Simon's the one in blue, question. and I think the other one that I'm forgetting is in green. Hang on. Alvin Chipmunk's names. Who's the other one? He's not coming to me. Uh, I don't want to know who they're played by. I want to know the names. Theodore. I forget which one's Simon oh, yeah. and which one's Theodore. Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. God. Okay. I should have known that. We'll forget him in like two seconds. I know. So let me... Okay, I'm going to ask you this. Is is the imposter a chipmunk? <laughs> yes. Okay. So... All right, let's see. So it's chipmunk, not a mouse. Okay, well, that opens up some stuff for me. So let's do this. I want Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. To be, I'm stuck between currently Head Nutter or President of Nuts. Um, I think Mickey Mouse is obviously an iconic mascot. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm going to put, I'm going to put him at, I'm going to put him at Head Nutter. He's the Head, head nutter. nutter. Okay. I think. I mean, he's the face. I mean, it's Mickey Mouse. Like, are we going into this assuming that he's got the reputation he already does? Oh, yeah. He's not unknown. Okay, good. He's Mickey Mouse. Okay, good. Because I was thinking, if nobody knew Mickey Mouse, it'd be kind of strange that a mouse was the head of a nut company. Uh So I needed to make sure that he had the prior reputation. So it's going to be okay. People already know he's Mickey Mouse. Come get your nuts. Oh, my. boy, we got the best nuts around. I say know. mice do so, eat nuts. They are more famously known for their love of cheese in cartoons, which is kind of funny because right. in real life, they don't, mice don't really care about cheese any more than anything else. But isn't that so weird how like, yeah. And I always picture, it's always like the, the nice gourmet in all the cartoons. It's the gourmet like slice of yeah. like Swiss cheese. And it's like, it always looks so good. Um, they like peanut butter. Okay. They do like peanut butter. We used to put those on like the traps and stuff yeah. when we had like mice problems. Um, okay. So I can add another one here. You sure can. I'm thinking, what do we know? No, I was a big fan of Stuart Little when I was young. Yeah. I don't remember much about him now. Do we know anything about his personality? He's a pretty straight and narrow kind of kind of kind of mouse, right? Uh well, he's a chipmunk. Alvin's a chipmunk. And he uh no, 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 Stuart Little. Oh, Stuart Little? Uh, he's a, yeah, just a mouse. He's just, he's a little orphan mouse who just fa- wanted to find his family lost in the world. Yeah, no, he's a pretty just kind of chill dude, honestly. So, I'm thinking, yeah, he's just trying to find his way in the world. I feel like he would be a really safe bet for the Nutpacker. Give him, give him, look, look this mouse is a, an orphan. He needs some consistency. You know, he needs to... He needs kind of like a home base, and I feel like being the nutpacker would be a very run of the mill kind of kind of job. He would do it well. He'd be committed, and it wouldn't you know it wouldn't rock the boat for him in his life too much. So I I, I kind of like him going there. So put put Stuart Little as the nutpacker. The nutpacker. There's nothing wrong with packing nuts. Nothing wrong with nothing it. Nothing wrong with that. He just clocks in his nine to five, packs some nuts, goes home, enjoys his. Uh, I don't remember what car that is that he drives around in i don't i never saw how many Stuart littles did they end up making that little red car just two i think a couple did they make three more than two i think two uh i, I only ever saw the first one same classic though those are based off books right uh i think so i think so i never read the books though i was more of a. I i mean they're not really the same thing but i was more of the mouse and the motorcycle kid I didn't know that um, those one either. Books, if you ever remember the mouse and the motorcycle. Um, what was the um, what was the if you give a mouse a cookie? That was mine. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So what happens if you give a mouse a cookie, Weston? He's gonna want some other stuff. <laughs> 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 He's gonna keep wanting things. <laughs> right, yeah. It doesn't stop there. So do I get another question now? You do. You get one more question. Okay. I don't know how specific I can ask of a question. Um, it's it's just like see. the Guess Who game. You can ask like anything. I'm just only going to give you like a yes or no, though. Does the imposter come in a trio? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. 
So we know it can't be Alvin. We can't put them there. We can't put Alvin the Chipmunks anywhere. Yeah. Of course. I would have liked them, too, for one of these. Um, You've sussed it out. Okay. You've figured it out. I did. I did. So I've kind of painted myself into a corner a little bit because I don't think anybody here would be the, a great president of nuts. That's who I would have put Mickey Mouse as myself. I was I was debating. Um, I feel like, though... We need somebody who's still going to be. Re- well, we need somebody responsible for finance and nuts. And I'm not going to put Conquer anywhere. Um, well, let's see. If there, is there anything that we could use of his that would be good? My my no, spot no, for Conquer would have been head nutter. Where like his whole shtick is he just gets to be nutty. He just gets to be nutty. That was my position. Yeah, but he's a drunk. Him. I just that's fine. I feel like any any time <laughs> he'd sh- he'd show up to like an advert, like like you know, like he he just couldn't he couldn't perform. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna take a um because we don't know much about the Sonic one. Yeah. I'm gonna put I mean she's a princess. Yeah. Right? So she she knows what it's like to kinda t- to lead. Um I'm gonna put her as president. President of the Nuts. Princess becomes president. I, I'd be okay with that. Princess becomes I, president. I really should have done more I just forgot to do this i should have done more research on her character before coming in the, into this she's the one i knew nothing about everyone else i knew at least a little bit about and i'm just not a sonic guy and i forgot that she was on my list and uh, right, when you were same. like tell me about her personality i'm like i have no idea <laughs> well that's okay because i feel like if, if we know she's a princess she's got clearly some experience like leading of some degree so i just feel like that's going to be a, a safe place for her now when it comes to finance none of these are going to be great. <laughs> so, but I know that I can, uh, I'm stuck really between Chip and Dale or, or Jerry. Yeah. See, my um, spot for finance was going to be Stuart Little. Like he's the nine to five office worker. <laughs> that would have been it's my so spot. so funny because like the, these are my first thoughts and then I wanted to change it because I, I care about his, I care about his well being, and I think he needs a, just a consistent, safe job. So, <laughs> you know, I think there's a lot of stress with the, with the financing. I'm going to put, you know, this isn't the best pick, but I'm gonna pick put Chippendale there because one, they're a they're they're a you know, they're a duo team. Yeah. Also, you know, they I know they're they're more about adventure. And however, I feel like working together and the stress that comes with running the financing of a big nut corporation, you know, they, they know how to handle stress because they go they're in stressful situations when they save the day. So I feel like they could kind of work together and kind of channel that that stress management and kind of really get, get finances in order. And they can work together. Two man team. Also, not to mention neither of them are super experienced in financing, so they can kind of help each other out. They can work together. Gonna, it's not just a one man team. I was gonna say I can't imagine either one of those two sitting down in front of a computer in front of like <laughs> an Excel spreadsheet and doing fine. I can't imagine either of them doing that. They gotta retire at one point. <laughs> Do they though? I had to try and come up with the best excuse I could. I say if it were I don't want Jerry there. If it were me, I would have probably put them as delivery boys. Like way early on, they get to just go out and they can tag team the deliveries. That was my thinking. That's pretty good. Of course, you know when you're at the that's very beginning good. of this and you don't know who the imposter is going to be, you're kind of shooting in the blind. But I know that's that's the fun of this. That's fun. Yeah, because like I like almost everything I picked except maybe like like I said, I'm not a fan of the finance and yeah, but I really I I care about Stuart and I want him to really have a just kind of a, a safe easy job. You know he. He, has, he had a rough bringing, upbringing. Well, just to run this down for anyone who's not watching this and be able to see it, uh, we have our nine positions. We have Scrat as Delivery Boy, Rocky as the Driver, Stuart as the Nut Packer, Sandy as the Nut Farmer, Remy as the Nut Taster, Hammy as the Nut Scientist, um, Princess Acorn as the President of Nuts, uh, Chippendale as the Nut... nut the nuts of finance. There's two of them. The nuts of finance. Yep. And we have Mickey Mouse as the head nutter himself. Alex, what are we naming your nut delivery service? Um, I kind of want it to be like a super generic, like like a, like a nuts for you, like put the number four or something like that. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, ooh, hold on. I kind of like nut bringer. <laughs> We're nut bringer. <laughs> nut bringer. Um, <laughs> Bringers of nuts. It sounds like like a wrestler. Um, I'm thinking. Let me go. Hmm. We could always go the classic nuts, nuts, nuts. <laughs> Good. Um, 
I kind of, I almost like. Nuts, nuts, nuts. I kind of do like actually Nutbringer because it, it's simple and it could be like um, Nutbringer delivery. So it could be like, it could be N, NBD for short if you want it to be, but it, it, it but it's Nutbringer. And I want Nutbringer to be one word. Like a. Sure. Like with a capital B. Yeah. Nutbringer. Nutbringer. <laughs> The Nutbringer delivery, yeah. Well, Alex, you have founded Nutbringer, the nut delivery service. The imposter was Alvin, Theodore, and Simon, the chipmunks, the, the the gang themselves. So, how perfect is that? You managed to avoid having your delivery service shut down from the inside out, and you have a functional yep. nut delivery service. Hey, that worked out. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. We still need to make our city. Uh, we'll have to go. Th- our map, fun, yeah. yeah, our map of all the different uh, services we've done. I need, we need to do that. That'll be really fun. Now that we have so many of these, we should. And that needs to be a shirt. That does need to be a shirt. Like it could just be a map and just little points of interest of every place on our little map. We can slowly continue to grow it out. I love that we'll idea. Get the concept made and get the art made, and then we'll put it on yeah. a poster, and then we'll sell posters. <laughs> it'll be great I love it. Um, thank you everybody for listening uh, before we go Alex where can we find you you can find me at 721 North Brookwood Street that's not right in Pasadena California that's not where you are <laughs> so you can find no you can find me I, I, I'm going to lead you to because of the timing of this release I'm going to lead you to YouTube Specifically, I'm going to lead you to one thing I do, and it's called VGM Quest. By the time this comes out, it'll be really close to my latest video coming out, where I'm uh, doing a retrospective slash review on the music slash soundtrack to uh, the highly celebrated Super Mario 64. So if you're into nostalgic games or Mario in general, and you want to, everybody knows the music from it. So if you want to listen to that, that'd be awesome. VGM Quest, check that out. That's where I want to direct you today. Weston, where can people find you? Uh, you can say hi to me on Twitter at Weston Hasty. Come hang out and play games with me on my YouTube at Magic Man Mo. But in particular, head on over to Amazon if you want to pick up a copy of my new little poetry book, Smiling for the Sky, uh, 83 haiku style poet, poems about heartache. Um, you can look that up on Amazon as Smiling for the Sky. You can look at my name, Weston Hasty. Um, or smiling for the sky haiku will come up it's uh got i've got paperback and i got kindle versions check those out and in the meantime thank you all so much for listening to profoundish wherever you're listening to us from give us a rating five stars a subscribe a follow um whatever it is you can do uh if you're on spotify alex has those little polls down on the bottom go answer our poll so the answer up we can do that dang it support us on patreon if you would like uh patreon.com forward slash profoundish but other than that that's all we got for you today thank you all so much for listening and watching and until next time all right all right all right already Uh, uh.